Welcome to the second section of my course on how to use astronomical charts. In this section I'll be using the charts to find the open cluster Messier 38. M38 is in the prominent winter constellation Auriga. This constellation also contains the bright star Capella. For the moment we're going to ignore that. For this exercise we're going to assume that it is 11 p.m. Pacific time on November 24th and we are observing from my house in light polluted South San Jose, about Bortle 7. I'll be using the charts generated by SkyMap Pro version 11. SkyTools Pro version 3 will generate sky simulations to represent what you see. I will cover using paper charts in the next section. Since we are using a planetarium program we can just search for M38 and the chart will display the correct wide angle visual view. The hop that I will show is interesting for instruction. No claim is made that this is the quickest hop. I'm going to describe this process in excruciating detail. This is to capture the little decisions that happen along the way. In real life, this star hop should take seconds. First, we need to find where M38 is in the sky. I'm going to spend some time on this. Finding the correct starting point is the most important part of this process. Many constellations are difficult to see in the city. However, Riga is easy to spot. Note that some charts portray the shape of the constellation as a four-sided kite, rather than the five-sided pentagon you will likely see in the sky. Let's assume it's not easy to spot Auriga and show the process in more detail. Let's compare the chart and the sky. We need to orient ourselves using the available landmarks. Start with bright stars and easy to recognize shapes. Everyone knows the constellation Orion. The two bright stars mark Gemini. Finally we can confirm that Auriga is located here. Now we will plan where to start the hop. From my viewing location only the brightest stars are visible. That limits the choices I can make for the first star to hop from. The square marks M38. Let's take a closer look. I set sky map to plot the stars to magnitude 9. You could typically see stars this dim in a better sky. In this sky that may be a stretch. You may need to ignore the dimmer stars plotted to agree with what you'll see in the finder. The circle on the chart marks the field of view of my magnifying finder. This is where M38 is located. Note there are three bright stars near M38. We could choose any of these. We star hop by moving the field of view of the finder or eyepiece from one distinctive landmark to the next. We need to look for anything that will stand out. Triangles, groups of stars, bright stars, or bright deep sky objects are all useful as landmarks for your hops. Note the group of bright stars lying between Iota Riga, where the circle is, and M38. That will make an excellent landmark. I'm going to start with Iota Riga. Visually it will be in the upper right corner of the Pentagon. Our strategy will be to start with the finder on Iota Riga. We will then move the field of view in the direction of the group of stars. As the iota passes out of the field of view, the group will be visible. We will then place this group in the upper left of the field of view. At that point, M38 should just be outside the field of view. It happens to be finder visible, so we can just see it. For the moment, let's assume that's not the case. We then move the finder in the direction of the line of stars until they are just outside the field of view. We should now be on M38. Remember that the best path may be from stars in another constellation. For example, M104 is in Virgo, but the easiest hop starts in Corvus. Again, all this sounds complicated, but it will take mere seconds once you're practiced. Now let's go to the telescope. First you have to put the red dot on Iota. Looking through the red dot, you will see something like this. Your telescope will block part of the field of view. The red dot will be projected on a partially transparent piece of plastic. You'll be able to see some stars through the finder, but it may be easier to shift your view back and forth off the finder to make sure the scope is pointing where you intend. If you do not have a red dot, you will have to line up the scope the best you can. Let's look through the magnifying finder. If you do not have a magnifying finder, then use your lowest power, highest number eyepiece. It is extremely important that you verify that you put your red dot on the right star. Doing this check now will save you a lot of time. Even with the correct viewfinder, the sky may appear rotated when compared to your chart, just less so. I strongly suggest rotating the chart to agree with the sky, but which way and how much? The fastest way is to use star patterns. I highlighted in red and green two patterns that I used. You may have to move the field of view around a bit to get the best patterns. In the previous frame, some of the stars highlighted in green were hidden. Again, rotating the chart will make this far easier. I did not notice the red pattern until I consulted my rotated chart. A second way of determining the rotation is to watch which direction the stars drift. That marks west. I do not use this technique very often since it takes too long. The speed of the drift is shown many times what you will actually see. 
Now let's recenter iota in the finder. Since the chart is aligned with the sky, we can directly take from it all the motions that we should see in the finder. We know by looking at the rotated chart that the left side of the field of view is west, but we'll be moving based on what we see in the finder. After all that setup, we're now ready to move the telescope to the object. Since the map is rotated to agree with the sky, it can tell us directly how to move. The field of view circles will tell us how far to move. In this case, we want the field of view in the finder to move to the right. If we have a Dobsonian mounted scope, we just give it a little pull or push until the group of bright stars appear. Once they appear, we're at our first landmark. I'm going to shift the group so that they agree with the next finder circle. The chart says we need to move the field of view along the line of stars towards the 5 o'clock. M38 will appear at the edge of the finder field of view. Continue moving the same direction to center it in the finder. Remember that objects are frequently not visible in the finder. Only about half the Messier objects are. When you get to where you think the right spot is, check the finder image against your chart as we previously did. See if you can confirm that. Looking in the eyepiece we see. M38 will be obvious, although the dimmer stars will be washed out by the city light. If this was a dimmer object in a denser field or in more light polluted skies, then I would once again check between the charts and the eyepiece. For now, we're done. The previously described procedure will work for all objects, however for many it's gross overkill. Many objects are located in relatively bright groups of stars. For example, the hook of stars containing M11 is visible everywhere except the central city. Darker skies will give you more opportunities to use the red dot to put the finder on or almost on the object. For example, at Fremont Peak, Bortle 4.5, the sky is dark enough that the group of stars we used earlier should now be naked eye visible. Since they point directly to M38, you have the rotation directly. You can skip almost all of the above. The correct location of M38 is plotted as a red cross in the center of the screen. If your red dot has calibrated circles, it's even easier. SkyMap Pro and SkyTools give you many ways to use the red dot efficiently. For example, SkyTools provides a feature called the Interactive Atlas. You can zoom the atlas out and in by hitting a number keys. You can also overlay a context viewer which will show you the field of view of your finder or any telescope eyepiece combination. This concludes this example star hop. The course continues with section 3.